thanks for coming today, everybody. Um, I know you got it's football season going, but basketball is right around the corner, and you know our building's got you know pretty much our entire team in every day working out, playing. So it's a lot of excitement around you know the building, around the staff, and obviously our guys are anxious to get going with the season. So and us as a front office and Ricks and his coaching staff, we're we're ready to go. So really excited about you know what's in front of us and optimistic about this group and. Um, be glad to take any questions you guys have today about us. So where, where do things stand uh, with Buddy at this point? Um, you know, lob you an easy one to start. <laughs> 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 well, I would say Buddy's somebody that we love having on our team. Um, we want him on our team this year. You know, the business of basketball comes into play at times. You know, we've had talks with him about an extension. And, you know, those talks are, you know, at a halt, I'd say, right now. But that's not to say that they're done. Um, we'd like to have Buddy with us. We have no intention of trying to, to move Buddy, um, but it's also our job to listen if opportunities come that helps us improve the team. You know, that's what we have to do as a front office, and, but our intention is to have Buddy on the team this year and ha have him be a big part of our group. What's your sense of, I guess, his intentions or, or how he feels about things have gone how things have gone down? I mean, like, what's, where does he stand? Yeah, I, I think, you, you know, him. Buddy loves being a pacer. You know, Buddy loves, you know, playing basketball wherever he's at. I think he wants to be in a situation where he can be somewhere long term, which, you know, all players do. And um, it's got to be the right situation for both the team and for Buddy, um, both playing and contract wise. And but we do, you know, we're trying to you know, find a, a common ground on this with Buddy and we want him with us, like I said. And I think Buddy's going to come in and be professional and be excited to be part of this team. He loves playing with this group. He loves playing for Coach Rick. And, you know, he and Tyrese obviously have a connection together. So I think he's going to come in and play well, and we'll see what happens moving forward with, with him and the team. Does his relationship with Tyrese both on and off the court sway you or impact those thoughts? I mean, I think everybody in our team has a good relationship with Ty. Obviously, those guys have synergy on the court, and they have a little more history together. But um, we got to do what's right for the team and building the team, too. Um, you know, those guys playing well together is important to our team, but it's also got to be right for the long term of building the team as well when it comes to the contract. What, what is the next step for this franchise? Um, do you think this is a team that can get to the playoffs? I would say I wouldn't want to put a like win total or an ultimate goal for this season. I think we're trying to continue to look long term. I think we want to see growth and progress. Um, you know, we're not going to take a shortcut to try to jump into you know a playoff hunt right away with any sort of move or anything like that. But I think we'll know as the season develops where this team can get to. I think it's every season is different. You know, every team has a different identity. You know, we're hopeful that this team can compete. You know, to get to that level. But our ultimate goal is down the road trying to be great to compete for a championship and be an elite team. And that's not right going to happen right away, and we don't want to skip steps to get there. With, with, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody ask a question. My voice. Is what, <laughs> last what? year you guys were talking about more long-term thinking, but this year a couple of players have talked <coughs> about wanting that postseason berth and taking that step. How do you kind of manage those two things at the same time internally and with the players? That's a that's a great question. I think you know our coaches. I think that the roster that we have is deep. Um, you know, with a lot of competition that we're going to, is going to play out in training camp. We're seeing it already in our building today. Um, there's a lot of guys going at each other. I think guys feel that I've got to play to get a spot and a role on this team, and it's going to, it's going to bear out in training camp. And I think our, our coaches want to win, obviously. You know, our players want to win. You know, us as a front office, we've got to balance, you know, the long-term outlook. Um, but also, you know, the players want to compete. They're competitors. Our coaches are competitors. And so I think a lot of what's going to happen with rotation and starting and minutes and things like that will play out on the court as we get into training camp. Chad, um, Tyrese 20 and 10 roughly in what averages and the more knows that's enough, but does he have more to give scoring wise or would that, affect, would that take away from what he does playmaking wise? I would say scoring wise, if you ask Tyrese to try and score 23, 24 points a night, I think he could do that. I don't think that's naturally how he's wired. I think Tyrese has more growth in his game on the other end of the floor than the offensive end of the floor. I think Tyrese wants to be a better defender. He wants to contain the ball better. He wants to defend pick and roll better. He wants to rebound better. I think he knows that's the next part of his evolution of his game. Uh, but the 20 and 10, I think, is always going to be something that you know he's capable of doing every single night. Um, and he wants to win. I mean, he wants to make others around him better. That's his first instinct. 
But I think where we want to see growth from Tyrese is more on the defensive side than him scoring more points every game. What's we, the franchise's beliefs on the new PPP rule? I mean, it really only applies to you know Tyrese right now. Um, but I think you know it, it's a it's a good rule. You know, it's a good policy that the league has in place. I mean, the fans want to see the best players every night. Um, you know, we as an organization got to manage the long-term outlook when it comes to players' health. Um, you know, we're only on national TV at one time, so it doesn't really apply to us too much this year. Hopefully in the future it has a more application to us, but I think ultimately it's good for the league that our best players are playing, you know, every night they can play. Style of play this year, what, what should fans expect? Style of play. I think it's very similar to what we saw last year on the offensive side. I think we'll play fast. You know, I think Tyrese, naturally, that's how he wants to play, and you're going to be a reflection of the guy who has the ball in his hands the most. Um, I think some of our new additions like to play fast as well. I think Bruce, uh, Obi, you know, those guys both like to get out in transition. So offensively, I think you'll see a lot of that same fast pace, you know, a lot of three point shooting, hopefully, a little more pressure on the rim this year. You know, Tyrese is just so good at making plays for others. I think where I hope to see change in identity is on the defensive side. I think that's where we were, you know, very, very, you know, lacking last year. It kind of limited us from taking another step. I think that's the, you know, the area where we can make a jump this year. And that's, you know, some of the additions we've added, you know, are going to help us with that. And I think all of our players, dating back to exit interviews, know that that is where we have to show growth if we're going to go from 37 to 45 to 55, whatever that steps, you know, are going to be. It has to come on that end of the floor, and it's got to be something that starts right away in training camp. This is obviously a question for Rick, too, but how do you balance that from a <clears throat> personnel perspective? You guys, looks like you can put together a really good defensive five and a really good offensive five, and I think maybe the only guy who would be part of both of those would be Miles. You know, that, 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 that how do you strike a balance, you know, with, with your units of having, you know, guys that can score and, and guys that can, can defend if they're not always the same guys? I think it comes from the leadership of your team, too. I think it has to be important to the leaders of your team. Um, and that starts with Tyrese, and I think Tyrese wants to take on more of a, you know, active part of our growth as a defensive team, and it's guys holding each other accountable. You know, it, it's a great point. We have a lot of guys who are very talented offensively who maybe don't have the reputation of being great defenders, but that, I think that can evolve over a player's career, and it evolves as a team as well. Uh, I've seen players come to the league who can really score, and they morph into more of a defender as their career progresses, and I think we want to see that from individual players, and as the individuals do it, your team defense improves as well. Miles is obviously a great anchor to have back there at the rim, uh, but it all starts with containing the ball in the perimeter. And I think that's where we've got to show growth, and it's going to be emphasized every single day. It's been emphasized, you know, since the season ended. Coach Jim Boylan's been added to our staff, and he's going to have a lot of prominent voice in our defense, which I think will help. Um, but our team, our players as a, individuals, have to take some ownership in that. Chad, how do you think Jairus and Ben fit into what you want this identity of the team to look like? I would say starting with Jairus, that's kind of what he, you know, views himself as as a defender first. I think he, as we went through the draft process and talked about what he could bring to a team, he always reverted back to what I can do as a defender. You know, he likes to take on the challenge of guarding other guys that are, you know, big, strong, can handle the ball, like to score. And he's got to learn the NBA game, though. I mean, he can be a great defender at the high school and college level. The NBA is a whole different notch of talent. And it's going to take him some time. And he may have some nights where he's put on a really good player and he looks like a, you know, a rookie. And so, but I think he's anxious to take on that role. He knows that's what this team needs. And whether he's ready from day one or not, we'll see. Um, but I do think he can help with that part of you know, our identity. And you know, Ben is a guy who's going to make a lot of hustle plays for you. you know? And I think he'll grow as a defender as well. But he's not a stopper necessarily, like I think Jairus could maybe morph into. But Ben's going to make extra effort plays that help you win games and help you get stops. What vision do you have for the centers considering the log jam still exists? I think that's all going to play out on the court. You know, I think obviously Miles is going to be an anchor for us. You know, the other three guys between Isaiah, Jalen, Daniel, it's going to be very competitive starting from day one. It's competitive. We walked over here before we met with you guys, and it's guys going at each other. And I think that's going to carry over into training camp. And I think Coach Carlisle and us as a front office want to see how it plays out on the court. We don't want to give anybody something right now. It's got to be earned. I think that's the growth of a team and growth of a player is earning your minutes and earning your role. And, um, you know, Daniel had a great offseason with his German national team. Isaiah and Jalen had great you know, summers with us. And it's going to play out on the court um, who, who determines who plays that backup center spot. So you guys, are, you guys want to see this whole, all four through camp? 
Yes. So what, I guess what happens when you guys make a decision, I guess is my question. I mean, do you, do you have to look to, you know, move somebody because I don't know that you're going to want two, two guys out there who aren't getting minutes. Yeah, I think that could be something that's coming that we'll have to make a decision on. But, you know, we also want to see how the season goes, see how the season starts. You may have somebody who plays his way into it early and another person earns it later. And so you got to let things play out. I don't think we want to make a quick decision based on what happens at training camp. Uh, we want to let this team have some time together and see how it comes together. You're going to have injuries to manage. You're going to have other things to manage. Trade opportunities come. So it's it's always going to be a, a fluid situation. But it is having four centers is something we're going to have to figure out a long-term answer for specifically the backup center. You talked about Buddy, but what about extensions for you know Obi, Aaron, Daniel, TJ? Have you talked about any of those? What could the future be like with any of those guys? Yeah, I think you know both of those guys. You know, or Obi and Aaron are extension eligible, and I think you know we'll. We've, we'll have conversations with their with their agents on whether it makes sense or not. You know, it's got to be, you know, it'll be somebody we haven't seen in our on our team yet. So um, I think you know we would like to see how things play out there. You know, Aaron obviously has had one year with us and did a good job for us, but it's got to be the right situation for both sides. And you know, we'll have those conversations, but I don't think it's, there's no rush in anything right now to to do anything with with those two guys at, at the short in the short term. This is the intention for Ben to start this year. I think. Training camp will determine that, but I think going into right now, I think that's probably where he's going to begin, but uh, it's up for grabs once we get on the court. I, I feel comfortable saying Tyrese will probably start, <laughs> and I think Miles will probably start, and the rest of it is going to be determined over the next you know month or so. What does Bruce Brown bring to this team? Championship ring, number one. The championship experience, uh, he's been more and more vocal as we is he's got more comfortable around the guys and us, which I think is very valuable. We've lost some of that with James Johnson not being here. I think Bruce will give some voice to the locker room that our younger players are going to look up to because of his experience last year specifically. But on the court, he's going to bring some toughness. He's going to bring some you know, on-ball defense. He's going to bring some uh, versatility in the fact that he can guard multiple types of players. Offensively, he can play multiple positions. And he can just he can fit in with kind of almost any group you put out there on both sides of the ball, and you know he's a, he's a guy who just loves to compete, and that's kind of what a pacer is—a tough, unselfish, competitive guy. And I mean he fits that for us. And I think our defense taking a jump will be—he'll have a big big part of that hopefully this year. Are you content with your veterans that you had in terms of last year? You purposely brought in JJ. Um, you don't have the roster spot to do that this year. Are you good with? This current bunch. Yeah, I think some of what we'll lose with you know, you know, James not being here is going to have to be filled in by some of our younger players, kind of finding their voice too. You know, at some point, as you know, our young guys take ownership of the team, that involves being more vocal, and you know, that's a lot to ask a young player. But I think some of our young players are growing into that role. Miles is a very vocal veteran who has the voice of the locker room, has the attention of our players. You know, Buddy, T.J. McConnell. You know Bruce Brown. You know we have veterans that can fill that void, uh, but we also want to see some of our younger guys, specifically. You know I think Tyrese is you know getting ready to take on more of that vocal leadership. Um, his experience with USA Basketball I think is giving him a little boost of confidence too. So we'll see how that morphs out. We're going to miss James's presence. You know is just his sheer presence. You know brought a little personality to the locker room, but. You know, each season is different, and I, th I would like to see some other guys, you know, step up under that leadership role. You talked about this, the possibility of Ben starting, like I know, like you said, obviously this has to play out in the court and in camp and whatnot. But I guess how much did that maybe does that play into discussions with Buddy? I guess as far as I mean, was it discussed about the possibility of him being a more of a bench option this season, and that may, that maybe also leading to fewer minutes to Ty Tyrese? Did that I guess enter into contract discussions, and does that enter into your? Kind of your your and his, I guess, total vision for where things go with you. Yeah, I mean, Buddy specifically, we you know in his exit meeting we talked about his role could be different moving forward. Um, you know, Ben's development and development is important to the future of this franchise, and it's not going to happen instantly. And so, finding the right you know sweet spot for Coach Carlisle and roles minutes for. You know, Bruce for Buddy for Ben for Drew TJ. That's that's going to be it's going to be challenging. I think we all see that. The players see that. The coaches see that. You guys all see that. Um, but ultimately, you know, it has to be earned on the court. And I think I can't say that enough. As 
training camp this year is going to be very important for us. How guys perform, nothing's going to be given to you know these guys. They've got to go out and earn it, and that's that's how we grow as a team. That's part of our growth as a team is guys earning it. And you know, in the past, we've had young guys that we've kind of thrown into the mix a little bit and let them kind of sink or swim a little bit. And we'll do a little bit of that this year, but really we want this to be earned on the court, and that'll be part of our growth as a team. Because guys have to earn it, what will be the challenge of people management this year for the guys who maybe don't earn it, who do want to play? Every year, you're not going to have 15 happy players, <laughs> and you're, you're always going to have some guys who want more, which as a competitor, that's natural. So it's, you know, it's kind of on us as a front office, it's on our coaching staff, it's on the leaders of the locker room uh, to make sure everybody knows the importance of the team and the importance of being ready when your name gets called because 82 games, everybody gets their name called at some point. And if you're not ready, you know, you're, you're letting the team down, you're letting your teammates down. So that's, that's a challenge though. Keeping everybody in the locker room engaged and happy with their role is going to be something we're going to have to, to manage this year. But I think we have the leaders, you know, both on our coaching staff and in the locker room to help, help get through that. How significant do you think it will be to, or cool to see Jenny move to the front of the bench and continue what she's doing? Yeah, she's earned, earned this opportunity. I mean, she has a major influence on this team. Um, our players really respect her knowledge of the game. Uh, she's had major impact on TJ McConnell's shooting. She's had impact on Andrew Nemhard this summer. Um, our players really look for her for confidence. You know, she has a, a great way of delivering a message that, you know, delivers some, some confidence into a player. And she's going to do great for us. I mean, she's, you know, paid her dues, and this is a great opportunity for Jenny. Male or female, she's just a, that's just a damn good coach. How important was FIBA for, for Tyrese? What kind of, what have you seen change in him, grow in him just from that experience? Uh, I think being around those other good players, obviously being around, you know, the coaches he was with, it's it just adds to your basketball experience as a, as a player. And, you know, you're with a team for 82 games, you kind of develop a role, a niche, and you get in your little comfort zone. Now you're kind of have to step out of it a little bit. He's coming off the bench, you know, he's not asked to score a lot, which I think he really thrives in that role. So I think he really felt comfortable, you know, being a playmaker for others and obviously has a lot of talent around him. And I think the FIBA game is a little different, you know, there's a little different rules to it, um, a little more physicality to it. And I've just seen examples of the past of players that go over there and play for, for USA Basketball and they come back from the experience much better off for it. And I, I think Tyrese is always going to be the upbeat, positive personality. We haven't seen a change there. I think his confidence on the court watching him play, he's more vocal. And I think he's tried to be a little more physical. And I think he knows that the benefits that he took away can help this team and help him individually. What is the message to TJ coming off a career year, but also kind of a log jam there in the backcourt? Yeah, I mean, TJ is another guy who wants to play and he deserves to play. And I think he's going to come in to compete. And I think TJ's had to compete for everything in his life. You know, he's never, nothing's ever been given to, to him. And he comes out, you know, on the, the, the right side of things with everywhere he's been. So I think he's going to come in and battle for, for minutes. And how that's going to look, you know, we don't know yet. Um, but I think he's, you know, he wants to be a pacer. He's happy being a pacer, wants to be here. He also wants to play, and that's just something we got to let, you know, play out and see where it goes. Chad, what does that major impact Jenny had on Nimhard? You said that right after you mentioned TJ shooting's gotten better. Is Nimhard shooting different or something? I think Drew saw what Jenny did for TJ shooting, and I think he, that really kind of piqued him like, hey, this, that's an area of my game that I want to improve. And so I think in talking with Jenny, there was a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with, with Andrew this summer, both here in Indiana, both Jenny was traveling to see Drew off-site, and Drew just wanted that constant reaffirmation that he was doing things right. And I think in watching him play right now, I think you know I see growth in his shooting. I think our coaches and all of us do as well. Um, and I think it's a lot of his Jenny just constantly having the same message in his ear over and over again. That's what a a shooter needs the confidence uh, that I'm doing things right and I may have missed my last seven shots but I need to stick with what I'm doing and I think that's where Andrew got interested in what can Jenny do to help my shot because I see what she's done for TJ um, I, hopefully we'll see some results you know with Andrew shooting this year not that he was a poor shooter but I think that was an area of his game he felt he could take another step are there any injury concerns of note entering camp none right now I mean knock on wood you know little Nixon 
you know, bruise, bumps and bruises here and there, but um, we have 18 guys in town right now, and they've all been playing.